This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. When there's a thought going through your mind saying, oh my God, you're going to die of this sickness and disease, you don't sit there and just be quiet. You open your mouth up, catch that thought, and say, by his, by his, by his stripes I am healed, I will live and not die. See, in this system, to catch a thought, you got to open your mouth. But when you open your mouth, you got to say the right thing to pull down that wrong thought. And if you can get hold of your thoughts, you can get hold of your emotions. Because if you can pull that thought down with the Word of God, it won't influence your emotions. But the Word of God spoken, creating that new thought, will influence your emotion and take you to the place where you need to go. Twenty twenty one is coming to an end, and we want to bring in the new year with you. Tune in on Friday, December thirty first at nine PM Eastern Standard Time and enter the new year with the World Changers Nation. Invite your loved ones to join us on December thirty first at nine PM Eastern Standard Time, no matter where you are. Tune in through the Creflo Dollar Ministries TV app, YouTube, Facebook, and if you're in the Atlanta area, join us at the World Dome. Set your reminder today. We can't wait to bring in the new year with you. This is your world, so let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that needs to know, your love is here to stay. Ooh, it's time we live a new life. Ooh, Let us love shine bright in you. We're saved by His grace, so we embrace your love. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. Now, a point in my life, I really didn't, I, I thought you couldn't control your emotions. I thought you couldn't control your thoughts. And, you know, whatever will be, will be. Uh, especially in this area of emotions, I thought, well, you know, how does a person control your thought? The thought showed up, so what am I supposed to do about it? Uh, I shared this Wednesday night. I was at this, uh, I don't know if these chain of grocery stores still exist, but I was at a grocery store called Ingalls. And um, I, I, I went into Ingalls, and, and there was this uh, uh, old lady who was in front of me at the, in, in, the, in line. And this thought, I'm ashamed to say this, this thought came through my mind. Wonder what would happen if you just push her. <laughs> Isn't it? That's awful. And I'm thinking, wh where did that come from? And I'm like, you know, and, and, and I had a physical reaction like, what, what, what? <laughs> and I remember Brother Hagin saying something. He says, you cannot stop the birds from flying over your head, but you can stop them from building a nest in your hair. In other words, crazy thoughts are going to come, but you're going to have to learn that they will come, but they don't have to become a part of your life. You have authority over thoughts. What do you do with those stupid thoughts that come through? I'm telling you, you can take authority over your thoughts. If you can get a hold of your thoughts, you can get a hold of your emotions. Look what he says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. The war after the flesh. You know, the flesh, the flesh is a mindset. The flesh is a mindset that uh, goes against the Word of God. The flesh is a way of thinking that goes against the Word of God. And uh, what he says is, ladies and gentlemen, you've got to understand, you know, when you walk in the Spirit, uh, walking in the Spirit is a, a mindset as well. Walking in the Spirit is a mindset that lines up with the Word of God. Walking in the flesh is, is a mindset that goes against the Word of God. Now, look what he says in verse 4, 2 Corinthians 10 and 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, the word carnal means, I mean, it means of the five senses. You know, I thank God for our senses, the sense to smell and to taste and all those things. Those things were given to us for our enjoyment, but they were never given to us to govern our lives. Our lives should be governed by the Word of God and by the Holy Spirit. That's taking things farther than its original intent, okay? And so he says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God, watch this, to the pulling down of strongholds. So God's Word and, 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 and God's way, His Word in our thinking will help us to pull down strongholds. Strongholds 
are fortified. It's a fortified uh, fortress in a man's mind, a fortified place in your mind. You know, one thought comes in, you didn't deal with it, it just stayed there. Another thought came in, you didn't deal with it, it just stays there. It's just kind of like the material to build this fortified place kept showing up and you didn't do anything about it. You just kind of let it come in and before you know it, you have a stronghold in your mind. Strongholds exist in your mind. It's a stronghold, it's a way of thinking that has become so traditional in your thinking. It's, it's, it becomes how things are in your thinking. It's, it's just the way things are in your head. It's a stronghold. And when somebody tries to tell you anything different, it bumps into your stronghold. And you say, no, 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 no. Why? Because you built a stronghold in your mind. Houses of thoughts that have been constructed in your mind becomes a stronghold. And the Bible says you can pull down every stronghold. A stronghold may, that may tell you there is no way for you to be free from this drug addiction. A stronghold that may tell you there's no way for you to be free from this anger uh, uh, situation. The strongholds in your mind, they convince you that you can't change. They convince you that you're stuck. But what's stuck is that stronghold in your mind, and this scripture says you can pull it down. Now look at verse, verse 5. He says in verse 5, casting down imaginations, those things that you see in your head that have not existed yet, casting down imagination, and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity, watch this, every thought to the obedience of Christ. That's powerful. Here he says, you can bring into captivity every thought. You can catch every thought. You can catch every thought. You now become, you now, according to this scripture, you can be a maintenance person over every thought. Now, for the benefit of those of you who have done this illustration, just work with me. For those who have not done this illustration, show you practically how to catch a thought. You don't catch thoughts with thoughts. You catch thoughts with words. Now, I want you to count from one to 10 to yourself. That means don't open your mouth. Count from one to 10 to yourself. Ready, go. Now shout your name. What happened to your counting? It stopped, why? Because the thought had to stop because it was being captured by what was coming out of your mouth to present a new thought. My God. So in your mind, when the devil's telling you, you're going to be broke all your life. You got to open your mouth up and say what the Word says about you. My God supplies all my needs according to His riches and glory, and you're pulling that thought down. When there's a thought going through your mind saying, oh my God, you're going to die of this sickness and disease, you don't sit there and just be quiet. You open your mouth up, catch that thought, and say, by His, by his, by his stripes I am healed. I will live and not die. See, in this system, to catch a thought, you got to open your mouth. But when you open your mouth, you got to say the right thing to pull down that wrong thought. And if you can get hold of your thoughts, you can get hold of your emotions. Because if you can pull that thought down with the Word of God, it won't influence your emotions, but the Word of God spoken, creating that new thought, will influence your emotion and take you to the place where you need to go. So now you see how important and valuable it is to open your mouth and speak the Word of God. So if you can catch hold of your thoughts, you catch hold of your emotions, catch hold of your emotions, you now are secure and in peace and you don't feel a need, you don't feel a need to try to control somebody else. So if I can control my emotions, then I can do absolutely anything. If you can control your emotions, you can do absolutely anything. It's good to be here this morning. If you can control your emotions, you can do absolutely anything. Glory be to God. Now, go to Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 32. It, it says here, Proverbs 16, 32, it says if you can control your emotions, you're stronger than an army. But the opposite is also true. If you cannot control your emotions, you'll be overtaken by that army. The Bible says in, in, in verse 32, he says, he that is slow to anger. Now, that's, 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 that's important because anger is an emotion, but it's more than an emotion. Anger is an expression of fear. God said to me one time, I, was, I got anger about something, and he said, 
what are you afraid of? And I, I said, well, don't you mean to ask me what am I, what, what, why am I angry? He says, no, you're expressing your fear through your anger. So, ladies and gentlemen, next time you find yourself angry, ask yourself, what am I afraid of? You know, you give your wife your credit card. <laughs> no, seriously, you give your wife your credit card and she goes shopping. She says, I'll be back in a minute, and she's gone for like half a day. <laughs> All right, now watch this. She walks in the room, and you go off on her. So why are you angry? Because you are afraid that she has spent more than what she needed to spend, and it's going to put y'all in a situation. Anger is an expression of fear. So you've got to ask, every time that emotion comes up, you've got to ask yourself, what am I afraid of? What am I afraid of? What am I afraid of? Because you don't want that anger, which is an emotion, to lead you to a place, and you do or you say something that you will later on regret. You don't want that to happen. So, he that is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he that ruleth his spirit, now here he's talking about your soul. If you rule your spirit, your soul, then, you know, he can, he can take a whole city. Can you take authority over your soul? Can you take authority over your emotions? Now, before I go on and, and get to preaching what I want to preach to you today, that, that's, that's to bring us all on one page. Everything I just said is trying to get us on one page. Let's have a three-point review. <laughs> what is it that I want you to get out of all of the stuff I just said here, and then we'll go to the Scripture? Well, number one, you can take control of your emotions. You can take control of your emotions. Say out loud, I can take control of my emotions. All right, number two, I don't know if I made this clear, but I'll make it clear right now. But number two, here's what I want you to get so far, is that self-control is a godly force. Self-control is a godly force designed by God to direct our lives where he has designed them to go. God has a place where he wants our life to go. And he's given us self-control or temperance. It's a force that God uses. Temperance or self-control. Self-control is a force that God uses to direct our lives in the place where he designs for it to go. Now, this is very, very important. So now you can see why the enemy doesn't want you to control your emotions. Because if you're walking in self-control, and if you're walking by the fruit of the spirit of self-control, then God says, I'm going to use that to get you your life in the place where I've designed it to be. So now watch this. When your emotions are out of control, when mess takes place in your life, that's the enemy trying to stop you from getting to the place where God designed your life to go. Why is it that there are certain times in your life where it appears and it seems like all hell just broke loose? I'll tell you why. Because the enemy knows you're about to get real close to that place where God designed for you to be. So it's time for him, it's time for him to create a circumstance a bad circumstance that will hopefully create a negative thought, and then you go with that negative thought, and it creates negative emotions, and now all of a sudden it moves you in a place away from the design will of God for your life. Why is it that, I mean, there, some of you know what I'm talking about. There, there are certain times in your life it's like, God, dog, what did I do to make God mad today? <laughs> and it's not that at all. It is the recognition by those other spiritual forces that you're about to step into destiny. And the only way, the only way Satan can stop it is to try to get in your emotions to get you to step away from your destiny. So the next time all hell seems to be breaking loose, you need to go shouting and say to the devil, oh, no, 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 I'm going to stay in control here, praise God, because I'm about to walk in my wealthy place. I'm about to get to my designed place that God wants me to be in. So it's not all right for you to just lose it when you want to lose it. I use an illustration I, sometime this week, either last night or Wednesday, uh, of a guy. He just bought, he just purchased a new car, but he's driving down Old National, and somebody rammed him and hit his new car, and he got out, got into his motions real quick, and got out the car and slammed the door, and he approached the guy, and the guy was trying to defend himself, and he hit the guy. The police came up and saw them when he hit the guy and they arrested him for, for assault, and he put him in jail, and it was a Friday, but before he left to work, his boss said, don't 
don't you miss or be late because if you do one more time, I'm going to fire you. And the wife, the wife just said, and if you lose your job and have to get another one, I'm going to leave you. And so, and so they arrested him on the Friday and, and, and he, and, and, and the judge is, is off on the weekend, but, 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 but he's not going to be back until Tuesday. And so he didn't make it to his job on Monday and they fired him and, 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 and the wife found out he got fired because they, they called and, and she packed up and left him and he's sitting in the jail and here's what he's saying. How did I get here? I'll tell you how he got there. His emotions took him there. And that's the question you ask a lot of time when you find yourself in a situation in life. How did I get here? Your emotions took you there. What is it about addiction that you, you, at one time you thought that I was over it and you're back? How did you get there? Well, I was feeling some kind of way, so I ended up. What is it about debt? Well, you just can't figure out that, you know, quit trying to buy a nice car now. The nice car will come later. Go ahead and do the necessary stuff. Get a roof over your head. Get, a ne get some necessary things. Get a car that works, that can get you back and forth from where you need to be. Why? Why did I get, why did I get this car that's causing me $1,000? Oh, it was my dream car. Don't seem like you can afford a dream, honey. It was my dream car. You need to delay your dreams. Your dreams can show up one day. But please, why did I do that? How did I get here? And then that car, you know how it is, it's nice the first week. Smell good the first. And then when that bill come in, I don't, I don't like the way it smell. I, 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 I don't like, what, what happened? How did I get there? Your emotions took you there. Emotional spending is why, why you're in debt. Your emotions took you there. Yeah. You're divorced from the man or the woman you love, but y'all couldn't figure out how to deal with an easy situation because you're hurt and the emotions came in and you couldn't figure out how to work it out. And then when the divorce is all over with and you're there alone by yourself and you say, how did I get there? Your emotions took you there. Your emotions took you there. Or you feel disrespected and you felt like, well, nobody's going to disrespect me. I've been disrespected all my life and nobody's going to disrespect me no more. And the first sign of maybe thinking somebody's going to disrespect you, you respond as if they've already disrespected you and you did something that now gets you in jail. How did I get there? Your emotions took you. Your emotions took you. Or you're at work and you decide, I can't take this no more. I want to do what I want to do and I'm tired of all of this stuff. And so you lose your temper and you scream at your boss and you're fired and it was a good job. How did I get there? Your emotions took you there. Well, I'm lonely. Nobody don't want to have nothing to do with me. I ain't got no friends. Your emotions took you there because, you know, people got tired of you trying to control every situation all the time. You talk too much and you don't know you talk too much and you're not a nice person to be around in the first place and you're trying to figure out how did I get in a place like that? Your emotions took you there. Quit blaming the devil for your decisions to allow your emotions to escort you in a place where you don't need to be because you have authority over the devil just like you have authority over your emotions. <laughs> or maybe in the realm that we can't see, you're dead, and you're like, how did I get here? How did I get here? And most death, you better believe me, your emotions took you there. Emotional eating, no, you don't need stuff that you keep doing anyway. Emotional eating, emotional dieting, that's how you got there. You got type 2 diabetes and you have a piece of cake every day. <laughs> 450 pounds and you're trying to figure out how you got there. Your emotions took you there. So why are we blaming the devil? Why are we blaming other people? It's because we don't know how to take charge over our feelings, and that's what this series is about, to give you the power back so you can 
and say no to those negative emotions and say, no, I don't have to do this. I've been given authority by the Almighty God to stand up bold and to stand up strong and to stand in the power of God's Word and to say to those negative emotions, no, 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 we're going to operate by the fruit of the Spirit. Sometimes you get angry. You just probably need to just chill. Every situation doesn't deserve a response right now. You'll live a happier, stress-free life when you know how to pause. <laughs> Husband says something to you, and, and the first thing you think about, because your emotion, your emotion is leading you from, praise the Lord, to I'm finna cuss this joke out. And you're, you got to stop your emotions from taking you there. You know, it's like keep your mouth closed, keep your mouth closed, keep your mouth closed, and you open your mouth up and say, well, and see, that's it. Now the words have come out. And it's finna flow now. It's finna flow. Well, you summer, summer, yes, son, you done the mess. And what you ought to do is just start praying in tongues and walk away and say, we will deal with this tomorrow at lunch. And some of it might make you so bad, you might get in machine gun tongue. You got to, I got to go. I got to move. I got to go. Because your emotions will take you a place where you don't want to be. You don't like where it's going to take you. You're laughing because you know I'm telling you the truth. And you keep blaming all of these other things because you've not been trained in how to take authority over your emotions. And the third thing I want you to get so far is that uncontrolled and unyielding emotions will lead to controlling the wrong things, and it will be people. It's wrong to try to control somebody. My God, it took a while for me to learn that. You can't do that. It's only because you're out of control that you try to control other people. So, what are emotions? Let's define it. Emotions are feelings on the inside caused by pain or pleasure trying to move you in a certain direction. Emotions are feelings on the inside caused by, plain, uh, caused by pain or pleasure trying to move you in a certain direction. That's what they, they do. They move you in a certain direction. Now, there are negative emotions that try to move you in negative places, but there are also godly emotions that can take you into great places. Emotions that God has given us to enjoy His presence and to enjoy His Word and, oh, to enjoy His grace. But those are the ones that are not causing us the problems. It's those negative emotions caused by pain and betrayal and hurt that are designed to move us in a position away from the will of God for our lives. So emotions are designed to, to move you. That's why Satan's strategy is, let's see if we can dominate you and defeat you in your emotions because we can then move you in the direction that we want you to go. We can move you in the direction of sickness. We can move you in the direction of debt. We can move you in the direction of violence. We can move you in the direction of addiction. And so he says, how can I get people to the place where I want them to be? I'll do it through their emotions, and I'll, I'll allow their emotions to escort them into places, and when they get there, they ask the question, how did I get here? Amen? So now you think, well, that's not me, so I'm going to show you Jesus dealing with emotions. I'm going to show you what you probably have never seen in church and the fact that Jesus had emotions. I'm going to show you where Jesus was depressed. What? This man, ain't no way, ain't no way in the Bible. Jesus was depressed and so full of stress. He made a comment. He says, I'm so depressed that I feel like I could die. Well, let me show you first of all. Look at Ephesians, excuse me, Hebrews chapter 4, 15. Hebrews 4.15. The reason why I want to show you Jesus is because Jesus had emotions, but his emotions never had him. He had emotions, but those emotions did not have him. There were times of temptation, but he never allowed the emotions to dominate his life. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15, he says, For we have not a high priest 
which cannot be touched with the feeling of our weaknesses. And so <laughs> Jesus is like, dude, I understand your feelings. I understand your emotions because I have them. Are your emotions controlling your life? Many people think that their emotions cannot be controlled. As a Christian, not only can you help how you feel, but you have, God has equipped you and provided for you the necessary resources to help you control, harness, and take charge of those negative feelings in your life. If you're not in control of your emotions, then you're not in control of your life. You know, you gotta watch what you say, everything that comes out of our mouth too. So the things that's normally going on in our life is as a result of us speaking the wrong way. I'm not saying those negative feelings won't come. I'm just saying when they, they do come, you can neutralize them, control them, harness them, and not let them lead you in a direction that's gonna be destructive to your life. Get the Secret to Stable Emotions seven message series for a love gift of $40 or more. Call the number on the screen or go online to order today. We want to be sure we are living according to what God has taught us about giving. And we understand that giving and receiving is a spiritual law. It's a reflex of God's love. And I'm so glad that Taff and I begin to understand how to walk in this principle. But we give not out of necessity. We give out of a cheerful heart. We give because we're grateful and we're thankful to what God has done. You know, I, I want you to pray about uh, becoming a giver into Creflo Dollar Ministries today. And if this ministry has blessed you in any way, consider sowing a seed of any amount and we will greatly appreciate it. Thank you in advance for your support and God bless you. Your financial donations into this ministry work all over the world to change countless lives. If you'd like to support our efforts to save the lost, you may call in or visit creflodollarministries.org today. God bless you. Creflo and Taffy Dollar love connecting with you. And here at World Changers, we understand the importance of using technology to do just that. We're constantly working to bring the gospel of Christ to thousands of viewers and followers around the world. And we want you to get involved. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. We want to make the word of grace available throughout every voice of social media. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe.